Here's what we're going to look at. We're going to create hyperlinks. So if you spot an error in something, you can click on it and go and change it or have a look where the file's coming from. And we're going to consolidate all the data from this folder. Okay, if I drag April into this folder, we're going to upload April. Here it goes. There's April's data. And I can right click here, refresh. And this will pull in all the files. It'll scan down here. And there's April tagged on. And if I want to go and fix up this March figure, I can click on the file and it'll go to that file and open it up. There's the word plum. I can edit it. Okay, close this down. Right click refresh. And in within seconds, it's all consolidated and there's plum. Okay, and these links work. Click on them. I can open up February. Right, so how do you do this? Okay, so that's the lesson here. Okay, let's go into this. So first of all, in order to connect to a folder in SharePoint, I've done a whole bunch of videos on this. Here's another way of doing this again. Um, and I'll also talk about in the next video, so stay tuned for the next one, I'll talk about using List Accumulate to actually allow somebody to parameterize and just type in a path, because this way is a bit of a pain. Right, so here we go. We're gonna highlight everything up to the word demo, which is the name of the site. Okay, if you're using Teams or something like that, you'll find that it's structured like this. And then we're gonna go get data from file from SharePoint folder. And we can do the same thing in Power BI. I'll show you this at the end, okay? And we click on this. And there's a few little tricks here. Okay, first of all, that's got to be the path. And then you'll have to sign in with an organizational account. If you've done it once, it just takes you straight through, like it will for me here. But remember, click organizational account and sign in. And I'm not going to go for combine. It's a pointless button. I'm going to go straight for transform data. Okay. You basically get the list, the full list of everything in your SharePoint site, which is never what you want. You never want to combine all that. So that button's pretty pointless, really. Right, this one's one I prepared earlier. I'll come back to that in the next video. So here we go. We start with this. And whenever you see SharePoint.files, my recommendation, change it to SharePoint.contents. And then I'm gonna to go to Shared Documents, click into that. Then I'm gonna go into this one, uh, SharePoint Navigation and Hyperlink. And I'm going to go into subfolder where the files live. You can see you're just sort of navigating down. And one of the things I don't like, there's my files. If I refresh my preview, I should see the April file in there as well, because I've only just added that. There's my April one. Right, one of the things sort of I don't like about this is over here on the right is this navigation step is all combined together. So I go to my advanced editor. And I add a little breakout step, okay? So split or breakout, whatever you want to call it. I'll call it split equals source, comma. And then this one is split. And this is a little hack. You know, it's not that step isn't actually doing anything. But when I click done, it actually forces the steps down the side to be split out into the various steps. So here you can see it's going to that folder. Here it's going to the subfolder. So it can make it nicer to navigate and make it easier for somebody to change in the future. And at that point, always stop here, okay? And call this something like SharePoint folder. I reg recommend you stop at that point before you do anything else. Oh, I've already got one called SharePoint folder, so I'll call it number two, SharePoint folder. Okay, because in this one that I'll talk about next week, where I've actually broken it down into paths. I've got a separate one called there, so I can't have two queries with the same name. Right, so here's my SharePoint folder. Then you right-click reference it. It just makes things easier for when you're editing stuff in the future. Right-click reference. Okay, and this, number two, consolidation. Okay. Right, so here we go. We've got this. This is what we need. We also need this. And the key for this hyperlink part is also grabbing this. 
I'm going to right click remove other columns. So there's the columns I need and I'm actually going to add a column that combines these two. So here we go, add a column, highlight those two, add column, merged columns, and then I'm going to call it hyperlink ref. There we go. And I no longer need this folder path so I can remove it. And finally, I want to expand these out. Now, depending on what you're trying to do here, um, you could do it this way. Uh, add column, custom column, especially you've got multiple things you want to combine potentially, and you use Excel workbook. Okay, open the bracket, double click on content, close the bracket and press OK. And now from within here, you don't need this content column anymore, so you can remove that. And you can just expand out this. And all I need really is maybe the name and the data. And I always want the data in TBL data from each file, okay? So I always want TBL data, put a little filter on that. And then I can expand this out product and units. All good, okay, awesome. Change that to a decimal number or whole number or whatever you need it to be. Do you really need this? Probably not, right click remove. All right, we're ready. So now we can just go home, close and load, close and load two. And I can load it to a new worksheet say, so table in a new worksheet, click okay. And there's my data. So what about the hyperlink? All right, well, if I insert a column, so I could go Control, Spacebar, Control, Shift, Plus. Okay, there's a new column to the left called uh, link. And you can use the hyperlink function. So equals hyperlink. The link location is over here. Comma, the friendly name could be anything. You could even use the name field. Um, Maybe I'll do that, actually. So I'll go, rather than using the word link in double quotes, I'll just click on this cell here. And then I don't really need to show either of these columns, so I could hide them, or I prefer to go under the uh, data tab and just group them, okay, and collapse. And there's my clickable link, and it'll open up. Okay, and if you actually want to do this in Power BI, let me just show you that very quickly. We can go here, we can actually go and grab the query to consolidation, right click copy, because the other one feeds it, it'll actually do this anyway, it'll bring it across. I can go into Power Query in Power BI and paste it, right click paste, Okay, see it's bringing them across. It might prompt you for credentials. You might have to sign in again if you did this, but otherwise it should just pull through. Okay, I'm gonna go close and apply. It's gonna bring the data in. I'm gonna add a table visual and then show the hyperlink icon, which is pretty cool. So here's the data being pulled in. I don't need, you need to load that. I could say uh, disable load for the actual folder. Okay, it's just this one, the consolidation. Here's the name, here's the product, here's the hyperlink ref, and there's the units. Okay, but I don't want that long description, so I'm gonna click on the hyperlink ref, go up to data category uncategorized, and change it to web URL. And then I'm gonna to go to my formatting, the search box for here, because I can never remember where it is, type in URL, and it's one of these two, I uh, happen to having tried, remember it's this one, and there's a nice little hyperlink ref. If I click on that, it'll open up the SharePoint file again. So there you go, hope you find that useful. Stay tuned for the next video next week because I'll be showing you how to use list.accumulate to allow somebody to actually just pick a path for their SharePoint folder, just type it in, and then you can jump straight to it. All right, catch you in the next video.